In today's Medicoabs Masterclass, we will learn about synthesis of thyroid hormones. The synthesis of thyroid hormone starts with the uptake of iodine inside the thyroid follicular epithelial cells. This is aided by sodium iodine symporter wherein one molecule of sodium and one molecule of iodine is co-transported from blood inside the thyroid follicular epithelial cells. This is an example of secondary active transport and this step is stimulated by thyroid stimulating hormone. Once the iodine is inside the thyroid follicular epithelial cells, it is moved to the colloid wherein it combines with the thyroglobulin to form MIT and DIT by addition of thyrosine residues. This process is called as oxidation and iodination process. This process is done with the help of membrane bound peroxidase enzyme and again this step is stimulated by thyroid stimulating hormone. Next there is a coupling reaction where again with the help of membrane bound peroxidase the MIT and DIT combines together to form T3 and T4. Once the complete reaction happens, the MIT and the DIT is then moved inside the thyroid follicular epithelial cells with the process of endocytosis. Here inside the thyroid follicular epithelial cells, they are generally stored for about 2-3 to three months. On demand, with the help of lysosomal proteases, these T3 and T4 is released to the circulation from where they reach to the target tissues. The MIT and the DIT is with the help of deiodinase again converted into tyrosine molecule and the tyrosine molecules again combine together to form the thyroglobulin molecule. So this is the process of synthesis of thyroid hormone. Essentially if you see the overview wise there are five steps. The first step is when the iodine is uptaken by the thyroid follicular epithelial cells. The second step is where the oxidation and iodination process happens where the uh, iodine along with the thyroglobin form the MIT and the DIT. The third step is the coupling, coupling reaction step wherein the MIT and the DIT combines to form the T3, T4. The fourth step is where the T3, T4 is stored inside the thyroid follicular step, follicular epithelial cell and finally the last step is with the help of lysosomal proteases, the T3, T4 is held on to the circulation. Let's recap the most important points regarding the synthesis of thyroid hormone. Iodine trapping, oxidation and coupling as well as the proteolysis of the thyroglobin all are stimulated by thyroid stimulating hormone. The hormone which has been synthesized is stored in the thyroid follicle for about 2-3 to three months bound to thyroglobin. Also sodium iodine sympoter is a form of secondary active transport. Apart from thyroid cells, this sympoter is also found in salivary gland, mammary gland and placenta. Also there is an important effect which we need to know at this point that is wolf chakoff effect in which when there is an increase in iodine concentration, the iodine concentration increase inhibits the entry of additional iodine into the thyroid and also interferes with the iodination which leads to the decrease in T3, T4 synthesis. So this is wolf chakoff effect wherein increase in the level of iodine decreases the entry of iodine inside the thyroid and also interferes with the iodination process of the iodine and hence by lead to decrease of T3, T4 synthesis. Let's look at the most important properties of T3, T4 combinedly called as thyroid hormones. T3 and T4 are iodine derivatives of thyronine whereas thyronine itself is formed by the condensation of two molecules of amino acid tyrosine. So two molecules of tyrosine combines to form thyronine and this thyronine once iodized this will become T3 and T4. Also conversion of T3 and T4 
happens in liver kidney and pituitary wherein t4 is converted into t3 with the help of deiodinase enzyme so t4 is considered to be a pro hormone for t3 so in liver kidney and pituitary with the help of 5 deiodinase enzyme t4 is converted into t3 also t3 hence is called as the principal thyroid hormone mediating the metabolic effects t4 has more half life as compared to t3 the half life of t4 is 6 days it is more stable and bound to plasma protein hence t4 is the major circulating thyroid hormone in the body so t4 is the major circulating thyroid hormone and t3 is the active thyroid hormone t3 on the other hand will have a half life of only one day and it is bound more avidly to the nuclear receptors t3 is more potent and acts faster also thyroid only secretes 20% of the t3 rest 80% is peripherally converted from t4 finally transport in blood of thyroid hormones happens by by this three thyroid hormone binding proteins namely thyroid thyroxine binding protein albumin and prealbumin out of which thyroxine binding globulin is the major thyroid hormone binding protein so these are the important properties of 33 and t4 the brain teaser question for today is which form of thyroid hormone is referred as principal thyroid hormone If you know the answer to the question write in the comment below also you can mention how could have i improved this video so that it could have benefited you more and don't forget to subscribe to medico apps master class by clicking here hit the bell icon after subscribing so that you get a instant notification of any new video we upload also check out another medico apps master class showing on the left side